are these people? Anti-Imperial Nexus is a really good, uh, it's anti-imperial dot, I think it's anti-imperialist dot news is their URL. I'll put it in the description afterwards. But the, um, everyone needs to, to see that the alternative to World War III is unthinkable for our leaders. And we talked a little bit about this person in this picture and, and what happened. And I, I still can't believe that that's, that's a real photo. And that actually, we, we did that. We did that. Everyone, our, our, our yep. tax, our, our tax dollars, our support, our military. We did that. If you're a sane, rational, informed person, you're probably losing your mind in a timeline. This crazy losing your mind is the most rational thing that you can do. You're close to hyperventilating as you wonder how it can be that all our leaders are making the worst possible decisions. You keep asking yourself, how can they be okay with child murder? Why are they taking us into World War III? Why won't they stand up to fucking Israel? Why won't they simply do the right thing? Well, why? 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 If you, why? If you had been paying attention to Agenda 2030 and Event 201 and the Great Reset stuff, you would know that this was all by design, allegedly. Mm. In a recent article, Ricky, Ricky suggested re reality might be hitting home for Israel, that it might be might feel reluctant to escalate. He had even suggested that the U.S. could walk away, but that's irrelevant now. The U.S. sent 100 troops to Israel to operate the THAAD air defense system and bolster the Iron Dome. The U.S. is now a direct participant in this war and could become a military target. We are the United States government. We don't do that sort of thing. No, we do. The way the way I see it, though, or the way the way this author sees it, the only thing that can explain what's taking place is that our leaders are trapped. Some are nervous about the risk of war, but they're on a train they can't get off. It is, of course, entirely their fault. No one forced them to get on the corruption train. The most corruptible individuals are scared of the people who've corrupted them. Any remaining scrap of integrity they have is redundant and irrelevant. Our leaders can't do the right thing. They can only deceive you into thinking that they're trying. Hence AOC about we're doing all we can, right? Macro mm -hmm. and micro. But they're scared of the Mossad. There is the, there's always the macro and then there's the micro. They're, they're scared of CIA, her handlers. They're scared of MI5. They're scared of the Israeli lobby, APAC. They're scared of their corporate donors. They're scared of the courts. They're scared of the press. The leaders who pretend to be tough who are, are, who are, these people? are scared of their own shadows, Damn. including that one, even though she's worth a quarter of a billion dollars at this point. Okay. Thank you so much for that support. Everywhere you look, there are people with the power to expose and punish our leaders if they don't do as they're told. In other words, they're not acting from a place of strength. They're acting from a place of weakness. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only option our leaders have is to stick with the people who blackmail them and ride the storm. Their moment of alliance, the moment that their alliance fractures, they're in trouble, and their alliance is showing signs of fracturing. So weak. So weak. I love him. If you're not following at Stephen He on Instagram, that's Uncle Roger. Amazing. <laughs> if the empire falls apart, everything comes out and the world will see just how repulsive these individuals are. Imagine how much dirt intelligence agencies have gathered. Imagine how easy our leaders have made this for them. As we know, Israel black blackmailed Bill Clinton with Monica tapes. Spy hunt ended after Mossad bugged the president's sex chats. And that's a book by, I think it was Woodward, maybe even. Remember a few mm. years ago when Bojo, the clown, father of an unknown number of children, was attending parties with Russian oligarchs without a security detail? Remember how we had a literal prince hanging around on Pedo Island? This is I the. Mean this is the problem with putting men with no morals into positions of power. They don't put men with morals into positions of power, though. They only want you there if you're compromised so they can control you. 
The CIA says it's uncovered many Epstein-style honey traps in the U.S. and Caribbean, but strangely, no prosecutions. Yeah, it's uncovered because it's running half of them, and Mossad's running the other mm -hmm. half. Now you understand why CIA has such power. The honey traps that weren't run by CIA, like I said, would have been run by other intelligence agencies. It's a safe bet that Epstein was a Mossad agent. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, this is from Dom Lucre, who we know how accurate his stuff is. Right. Just stop and think about what this says about intelligence agencies that send children to politicians to be abused, raped so they can blackmail, just so they can blackmail the politicians. Evil isn't even the word to describe it. Blackmailing politicians is so easy. Shame. 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 Blackmailing politicians is so easy, but intelligence agencies can't compromise every politician. Not all are so gullible, but everyone has their weaknesses. For example, Mossad has been accused of threatening the family of a former ICC chief prosecutor. In the case of Joe Biden, I dread to think of how much dirt they have on Hunter. If intel agencies can't blackmail you with something illegal or embarrassing you've done, or something a member of your family has done, they can always resort to more drastic intimidation. When Israel launched its brutal pager attack on Lebanon, every leader will have been saying, shit, can they do something like that to us? No one wants their electronic devices to explode and rip out their eyeballs, do they? Yeah. And then, of course, Bojo the Clown recently admitted that and that he accused that he believes Benjamin Netanyahu bugged his bathroom. Benjamin Netanyahu? That guy, yeah. Obama was famously recorded off mic telling Sarkozy how much he dislikes Netanyahu. Also famously, mm -hmm. Obama's administration bugged all of the world leaders in Europe, including Angela Merkel. We know that her phone was bugged. Well, we're boned. Biden has shared the same sentiments, calling Netanyahu a son of a bitch. Yet he does his biting any his biting his bidding anyway. It's it's and you ain't black, BB Biden. In Biden's case, of course, we know he's been a lifelong Zionist, but his loyalty to Israel doesn't fully explain why he's letting Netanyahu humiliate him. Even Netanyahu? warmongers, even warmongers have their lines. Both Thatcher and Reagan showed a willingness to stand up to Israel because they lived in a time when its influence wasn't as strong. Even Trump said that. There was a time when Israel wasn't, you know, uh, now Israel's, he, he thinks that, you know, the Israeli influence is weak, but dude, Adelson just gave him $100 million for his campaign. Almost, almost every politician today is either afraid to stand against the war machine or they're making large sums of money from it. And in many cases, it's both. Don't be rude. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs. The and, of, and of course, the politicians making money off the war machine. I can't possibly. I like it better than anything else. Yeah, we know. I enjoy it. I know she does. All right. House members who voted for higher military budgets took 4.2 times more cash from military contractors. Huh. Go figure. <laughs> I call myself a joyful warrior. All right. Whether politicians are willing or unwilling participants, the point is we have a system that is corruptible by design. Israel was simply the first country smart enough and committed enough to get in there first. I don't know if I agree with that, but okay. <laughs> that they were first? I don't I don't know if I agree. I think the Brits have long since infiltrated our politics. I think there's a ton of old money infiltrating from who knows where else. Carlos Slim money, or Japanese billionaire money, or Chinese money. China. Yeah, or even Russian money. But we know that only $10 million <laughs> went to the tenant media people, but that's not even what I'm talking about. <clears throat> if Israel didn't, it would have been someone else. Let me call the Russians to help. Yeah. It's important to point out that in this case, anyone suggests this boils down to Jews controlling the world is an unhelpful simplification. All right. Zionism 
of which there are more Christian Zionists in the United States than Jews worldwide, Zionism is a symptom of a system as a systemic disease. And if you treat that symptom, another will take its place. Systemic change is the only cure. Without systemic change, we can slow our demise, but we can't change our path. Bad people vie with bad people for control of the world. It just so happens that the most fanatical Zionists got themselves into a powerful position precisely because they're fanatical. If I can give Zionists credit for one thing, they know how to organize. So do the Christian Zionist fundamentalists, by the way, just as much as the Jewish Zionists. And again, he's being very careful not to designate Jewish or Christian. I will send you to Jesus. See, right to jail for me because I've I'm breaking that. But Zionist, fanatical Zionists, both Jesus on the Christian, is a brand. on the Christian and Jewish side. Western leaders are stuck on Team Zionists, whether they're regardless of whether they're having second thoughts. They're handsomely rewarded if they do as they're told. Any politician who steps out of line is marginalized faster than you can say, Jamal Bowman. <laughs> Ditto with the journalists. Which is why we're demonetized. Of course, we know that... Because Putin's a madman. As... APAC famously brags that 100% of APAC endorsed Democratic candidates have won their primary races in 2024. In their opinion, being the pro-Israel, is it's good policy and good politics. No, just for you, not for a lot of people. It's not good policy for a Palestinian baby who's been murdered by your bombs, fuckers. A small number of extremely wealthy people wield a hugely disproportionate amount of power, yet these powerful people are concerned. If the empire loses its foothold in the Middle East and BRICS replaces the petrodollar, then the game's over. When they say we're in an existential battle, they mean they are. They mean their power is coming to an end. Do not conflate their security with your own. Israel's neighbors are building an almighty arsenal of missiles and drones that have shifted the balance of power in the Middle East. Another 10 years and no Iron Dome, no shipment of the latest jet fighters will be enough. Israel is divided between those who want war but are nervous and those who want war but feel confident. Both, fa both factions now agree it's necessary to act. That's really fucking scary because there's no fucking peace there's nobody calling for peace anywhere. Unless the empire makes a technological leap, the military option will be gone and only diplomacy will be left. All right. We are seeing a rush to war in part because there is maybe a window of opportunity to win. The longer the empire waits, the lower its chances of victory. The empire can accept the world of diplomacy because the U.S. economy is built on war as much as it's built on the petrodollar. A world of diplomacy is a world of neoliberal bankruptcy. Gotta keep that war machine going. The irony is the oligarchs could be about to collapse the world order as that has kept them in power. As Israel fires on Unifil peacekeepers, as we covered last week, and even uses chemical weapons against them, white phosphorus anyone, the UN moves closer yep. than ever to collapse. If the ICC fails to act against Israel after the provisional ruling of the ICJ, it will lose all legitimacy, as if it hasn't already. The Empire knows it's in a mess, and its only hope is to come out of this mess less scathed than anyone else. Problem is, the world is now against Empire. And then as we turn around and accuse Russia and China of being empirical with all our bases, 800 bases worldwide. Chances are, when this thing is over, the results in BRICS replacing the UN with something that doesn't include us. Hopefully not. It ends with the petrodollar and U.S. military bases being driven out of the military east. Uh, mi military, the, mil the Middle East. Wow, that's, that's a Freudian slip. The military mm -hmm. east. It ends with the empire being an impoverished heap of pariah states. 
I believe that's what happened to Russia in the 90s. War, World War III would not be some cunning plan on the Empire's part. It would be an act of desperation from leaders who know that if we don't fight, they go to jail. Even if they don't go to jail, the gravy train comes to an end. They might as well roll the dice one last time. And there's the article about attacking Unifil. We desperately need an off-ramp, but that would mean compromises no one seems willing to make. Would you feel comfortable giving those who've committed genocide immunity from prosecution? Nope. Would Zionists accept the Greater Israel Project is over after decades of waiting for the opportunity? They will have no choice. Would the West accept a relationship of equals with BRICS and a global economy built on cooperation rather than domination and intimidation <laughs> and destabilization? Uh -huh. I think we all know the answer. Uh -huh. This is a zero-sum game, and millions of innocents will pay the price so a handful of corrupt politicians can avoid jail and enjoy corruption. Thankfully, there are limits on everyone's power. Real life is messy and fractures are showing as some find their courage and conscience. Italy, France, and Spain have accused Israel of violating international law. Spain and Ireland have urged EU countries to end free trade agreements with Israel. Spain and France have called for an arms embargo. Italy actually Im imposed one. BDS is going mainstream. Groups are launching legal action against our governments. There is a war crimes case against a thousand Israeli soldiers. Even an intimidated ICC will find it hard to delay arrest warrants for Netanyahu's regime forever. Israel is quite openly starving a million people to death in northern Gaza to quote-unquote starve out Hamas. This is as clear a uh -huh. case of collective punishment and genocide as you will ever find. But of course, even CNN World having to report, much to their chagrin because they're mouthpieces for Israel, that the UN says no food has entered northern Gaza since the start of October. Putting a million people, putting a million people at risk of starvation. Are they going to, are they going to, Turn to cannibalism and eating, eating, I mean, awful. They may not have a choice. I mean, all right. And then, of course, reminding people of the liberty and what happened that, that Israelis are not afraid to attack American interests as well. As evidence mounts against Israel, we might not just be looking at ICC arrest warrants. We might be looking at domestic prosecutions. I hope so. Chillingly, the most, the most effective way to stave off this threat would be a false flag. This would create a sense of national unity and motivate the public to sacrifice our soldier, soldiers in the Middle East. No way does our side go into Hezbollah's tunnels and come out unsa unscathed. Any attempt to invade okay. Iran unscathed. Any attempt to invade Iran would be a bloodbath. Only something on the scale of 9-11 would motivate the public to support such a sacrifice. I wait. Where is it at? I don't know. But ah, a false flag could easily come from our side. And if you think they would, if you don't think they'd be capable of this, please read a history book. The establishment will stop at nothing. To manufacture your consent. A false flag could equally come from Israel, the country that once attacked the USS Liberty to frame Egypt. Israel was credibly accused of bombing its own embassy in 1994 in London to frame Palestinian activists, so I wouldn't put anything past it. Yeah. Again, in the 60s, Israel attacked the USS Liberty and sunk it. Mm -hmm. That really happened. 
The goal of an Israeli false flag would be to scare our leaders into falling in line and blame Iran or Hezbollah. Just know that if an attack happens on Western soil, neither Iran nor Hezbollah would have anything to gain. The last thing they would do is give the West the excuse it needs to sacrifice its soldiers for Israel. Following such an attack, it would be essential for everyone to call bullshit to remind the public which side benefits from our response. Winning public opinion might be the one thing that helps us avoid World War III. And he reminds us that he saw a chilling video today and it showed the burning wreckage of Al-Aqsa Hospital following an Israeli attack with US-led US bombs, US-supplied bombs. A hand desperately reached out to the flames as a human life ended in the most agonizing manner. This could be your end too if we don't stop this madness. Sorry to be so heavy on that one, but I thought that was a really, really good article reminding people just how fucked we are. We're fucked. And because of stories like that, we're not monetized. And the algorithm's not pushing us. And we rely on you for funding. And so thank you to whoever gave the, uh, I think it was Kamishwari Kate for the support on, on the Kofi during the stream. I saw that pop up, but I'm unable to, because we're on the new stream, put that chat up on screen, unfortunately. But thank you, really. Appreciate that. That's We can't do this without you. All right. Again, find us on all of the channels that you watch your internet content. You can subscribe to our daily newsletter that tells you all the live streams, all the clips, and all the articles that are out for that day or the night before. If it was after the we published midday. We publish around quarter to six most days. Today we did a little earlier. Some days a little later. YouTube, Rumble, Kick, Twitch, Odyssey, everywhere that you can watch. Twitter.com slash or x.com slash get any news. That's us on the Twitters and t.me slash indie news network. There's also t.me slash inn friends. That is a discussion group or the uh, chat thread to respond to anything that posts on Telegram. Thank you.